Recently, Tesla released this thing. The Cybertruck really leans into the Blade Runner cyberpunk aesthetic, for better or for worse. The launch of this thing has been a disaster, to say the least. The stainless steel body is prone to rusting when exposed to such extreme weather events as light rain. Then, it came out that the gas pedal was prone to getting stuck, which meant that Tesla had to recall all current Cybertrucks on the road, among other things. While this is bad enough for sales of the Cybertruck, it's gonna get even worse. I doubt that many Cybertrucks will be sold in Europe. In this video, we'll take a look at the Tesla Pedestrian Slicer 4000, also known as the Cybertruck, from a European perspective. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Homologation is the process of approving a car, engine, etc. for sale in a particular market. Each country and or region has its specific requirements for granting approval. The EU operates on a single market, and so, after gaining approval in one member state, the other member states recognize the certification, and the vehicle is legal to sell and operate across the EU. The EU approval process is way more stringent, with way more emphasis on pedestrian and driver safety. While driver safety may be alright if you're sitting inside the stainless steel tank, if you ever get hit by one of these, you better have your coffin at the ready. Elon Musk himself said that, quote, if you're ever in an argument with another car, you will win, referring to the Cybertruck. I think this says a lot about our current state of society, when people are taking someone saying, hey, if you ever get into an accident, you will most likely kill the other people, but you personally will be fine, as a positive thing, but maybe that's just me. The problem with the Cybertruck in Europe is that it is extremely unlikely to pass the required crash tests and design specifications to be certified for sale and operation in the EU, as people don't usually like dying in preventable ways. The design problems don't end there. The Cybertruck is an extremely heavy vehicle. According to Tesla, the heaviest, beefiest truck weighs 3,104 kilograms, or 6,843 pounds. This is a lighter version of the prototype truck. According to estimates, the Cybertruck could have weighed up to 4 tons, which would make it illegal to drive in the EU with a regular driver's license. Even though us mere mortals would theoretically be able to drive the thing legally, its massive weight will still pose a big obstacle to certification. Larger, heavier vehicles cause more damage and injuries than smaller, lighter vehicles, because of the simple physics formula F equals MA. F equals MA, or force equals mass times acceleration, means that the heavier and faster a thing is, the more force is going to get expended when an impact occurs. Assuming a constant speed, a heavier car or truck will always impact other things with more force than lighter ones. The human body wasn't built for taking forceful impacts frequently, and so, cars are usually designed to minimize the impact force. This includes numerous safety features like crumple zones. Passenger cars like Tesla's own Model 3 are built to crumple up in a crash, absorbing the force of impact and minimizing the damage caused. SUVs, pickup trucks, and especially the Cybertruck are built on a rigid, tough frame, which means that instead of crumpling up in a crash, they will plow through anything in their way. Next, European EV fast chargers almost exclusively use the CCS2 charging port, unlike the US. Selling the vehicle in the EU would require the charging port to be adapted to local standards. And to top it all off, due to its design, and due to being made of stainless steel, which doesn't bend very well, the truck features numerous sharp edges, which is a big no-no in the EU, posing yet another challenge for approval here in the old world. Regulatory challenges aren't the only problem the Cybertruck faces in Europe. Next up... While Europeans aren't exactly poor, European incomes still don't match those of Americans. Of course, income depends on the region, with Western and Northern European workers bringing in, on average, more than their Southern and Eastern European counterparts. A median, single person in the whole European Union brings in 26,135 euros, or about 28,000 US dollars per year. In comparison, the median, single American worker brings in 46,985 US dollars, or 43,886 euros per year. Europeans also seem to take out less car debt than Americans. 
American car debt reached about 1.58 trillion US dollars or 1.48 trillion euros in 2023. At the same time, Europeans held about 330 billion US dollars or 308 billion euros of car debt. This means that in general, Europeans have less means to buy extremely expensive cars like the Tesla Cybertruck. As of April 2024, the truck costs 81,895 to 101,985 US dollars or 76,519 to 95,290 euros respectively, depending on the model. These are the prices for the US market. If the Cybertruck ever comes to Europe, it is likely that the prices will be higher due to the high cost of adapting the vehicle to European standards. Cars and trucks this expensive are simply less affordable for a large part of Europeans, making the market for the truck smaller. There's also the issue of the thing's size and the culture around trucks. In general, European roads are narrower than US roads. This difference is the most pronounced in cities, where streets can get so narrow that they barely fit a single passenger car, let alone a huge truck. Our parking spaces are also generally smaller. I have found multiple sources saying different things, but all of them said that European parking spaces are generally 10 to 20% shorter and narrower than American ones. Our garages and driveways are generally smaller too, making actually owning the Cybertruck more difficult for us. Overlooking the size, European culture and car buying habits don't help the Cybertruck and pickup trucks in general. Pickup trucks make up about a 4-5% share of all new cars sold in Europe in 2023, compared to the US, where pickup trucks made up 20.5% of all new car sales in 2022, European car buyers aren't that keen on trucks. This doesn't mean that Europeans are not buying large vehicles. SUVs make up about 50% of all new car registrations. However, they are usually smaller than American SUVs. Trucks are still quite uncommon here. You likely won't see many Ford F-150s or Chevrolet Silverados on our roads. Although from personal experience, they are definitely more common than they were 5 years ago. Anyways, thank you so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support the channel, I've put some affiliate links in the description. If you buy something with these links, you will directly support the channel and my work, and that will be greatly appreciated. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time, bye! Of course, income depends on the region, with Western and Northern European workers bringing in, on average, more than their so These are the prices for the US market. If their Cybertruck ever comes to Europe, it is likely that the prices will be higher, due to the high cost of adapting the- Pickup trucks make up about 4- mm -hmm. Bruh, why is- Why is speaking so fucking hard like, huh?